Yes, people, what's going on? Welcome to Stretford Paddock. I am Adam McCola and I am back. I've been away for a few days, almost a week now, but it's because I've been a little bit ill. We are now back in full effect. And of course, we've got plenty to talk about today. After the Newcastle takeover, we've seen a whole host of Manchester United players linked with a move up north. Also, Facundo Palistri, who's on loan in Spain, could be returning to Manchester United early doors and we'll look at why that could be happening as well as getting stuck in to any other bits of news that are about this morning what i want you guys to do though is a little bit of a favor for me get hitting that subscribe button go and do it if you're not subscribed to stretford paddock yet make sure you're hitting that subscribe button and also get your notifications on so when we go live when we upload you are notified of what's going on on the channel so much more to come your way and we've had an action packed last few months as well so much different content so thank you to you guys for being a huge part of it and like i said let's get stuck into this news now we are hearing reports that newcastle have inquired about the availability of anthony martial and we've also heard reports that newcastle are interested in the likes of donny van de Beek and jesse lingard now what i believe half of this is is that Newcastle have now got so much money, they don't know what to do with it. Um, incredible wealth, the wealthiest club in the world. Wealthier than all of the Premier League combined. Now, there's a few things you could feel about this takeover. Look, from a non-footballing perspective, to see that family taking over a, you know, that royal family taking over a football team, you don't want to see that happening. You know the reasons behind it. It's sports washing. It's as simple as that. But when you look at it from a football perspective, it has just made the Premier League an absolute madness because in the next couple of years, you're going to see Newcastle develop as you saw Chelsea and Manchester City develop. Newcastle, you know, when you look at the facilities that they've got there, huge stadium, big crowds, you know, huge support up north. Like, they're going to go for this. They're going to absolutely go for this. There's going to be no messing about. And we already hear that they can spend up to 200 million in the January transfer window because of the fact that you know Mike Ashley hasn't been spending there over the last years and it wouldn't affect their FFP. So we're going to see Newcastle now getting real serious, chucking money around, changing, you know, you know, you could see a younger player about to sign for someone and they'll just go here's here's double the wages, take it and that player will go there. It's going to be incredible right now. Um, and probably not good for Manchester United when it comes to trying to negotiate and bargain for players when you've got another one of these clubs that are cranking the price right up. So let's get stuck into this. As we say, Newcastle um, inquire about Man United attacker, but Spanish clubs are also in the mix. So this comes from Stretty News, but we also heard it from the Manchester Evening News. Um, and we saw another story in Express where they've thrown Lingard and Donny van der Beek's name into the mix. Now, in this article in the Stretty News, it says, however, Stretty News understands that Newcastle United's recruitment team have already made contact over the possibility of signing United's Anthony Martial in January. Martial has struggled for form in recent seasons. A club source who has been involved in initial talks has revealed to us that Newcastle have made formal contact with Red Devils as well as the players' representatives. Now, this could be a move that happens because you've got to look at someone like Anthony Martial who's on big wages. Now, a lot of clubs won't match the wages that he's on at Man United. If you're looking at going abroad, and I think a lot of clubs abroad would be interested in him, one of the sticking points is going to be his wages because Anthony Martial's wages at United are pretty good. So they're going to have to match them. Can Italian, can Spanish clubs do that at this moment in time? Probably not. So Newcastle then becomes an option. In terms of a team that can pay the wages, keep you in the Premier League, make you their main man, etc. But is it the move for him right now to take? I don't think it will happen. I don't think it will happen. But it wouldn't surprise me to see it happen. And it was funny, I was talking to Bry yesterday and I went, before I'd read any of this news, I went, you lot probably being fans to the Marshall. Because he's that kind of profile of player I think they will be targeting at this moment in time. If any, new, if, if any big clubs are letting go of younger players and or players that have talent but just haven't quite cut it, Danny van der Beek could fall into that. Jesse Lingard could fall into that. I think Newcastle will be there polishing up those players, picking them all up. Um, now, obviously, still a long way to go. Obviously, they've still got to build themselves up to a position where they're in Europe and 
potentially Europa League, Champions League and all that stuff. So will these players want to go there yet? But money talks. Money talks for sure. And they have got a whole host of it. And look, there's a lot of bad reasons um, attached to it. And <laughs> it's quite horrible when you think about it. But from f purely footballing perspective, this is a game changer. It's absolutely a game changer. Um, crazy stuff going on at Newcastle right now. Um, Man United are considering terminating Facundo Palistri's loan at Alaves after just one league start this season. With Premier League side able to trigger a clause if he has not played 1,000 minutes before the start of December. So it seems like United are putting a little bit of pressure on Alaves at the moment to play Facundo Palistri now. That's always a problem with loan players. When they go away from their parent clubs, you know, you could have a chop and change of manager, you could have a manager just not fancy him, you could have so many different things happen. Or they rely on, you know, they find one of their own younger players or they've got a signing that's permanently at the club and they can... Like, there's so many different things that can be you end up down the pecking order. And Facundo Palistri is in that situation at the moment at Alaves and it looks like he could be returning to Manchester United. But as I said, this could just be purely mind games. It could just be United putting pressure on Alaves so that they don't have to trigger that clause. Um, but we need to see him in their team soon. Otherwise, he will be back in Manchester. Now, we have had the Ballon d'Or nominees revealed. And I've got to say, it might be the worst list I've seen in a long, long time. A long, long time. Um, because, of course, you've got Ronaldo or Messi on there. Standout players, obviously. Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi. You know, hard to discount them as some of the best players in the world. Then you've got the usual suspects. The Luis Suarez's, the Mo Salah, Neymar. You know, uh, Mbappe's there. Although, does he deserve to be there? Probably not. Um, Lewandowski, of course, he deserves to be there. Kante's there. Harry Kane. Why? Um, Jorginho, I understand that one. Um, Bruno Fernandes is in there. Kevin De Bruyne. But then you're looking around and you've got Cesar Aspil Cueta. Why? Why is he nominated for this? Why is he nominated for it? Why? Benucci is nominated for it. And I know Italy won the U. But is he the best player in the world? Is he in the top 30 best players in the world? Um, Ruben Diaz, Dono Ruma, Phil Foden. Like, I thought the list was fake first. I love Pedri as well. I think he's an absolutely amazing talent. Played so much football over the last couple of years. But how is he nominated? Like, how? It might be the worst Ballon d'Or nominees list I've seen in a long, long time. Long, long time. Um, anyway. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure you like and comment and share and subscribe and keep it at Light to Strep for Paddock. I'm back with the news tomorrow as well. I'll get some newspapers in and we'll do the Gazetta. Um, but until then, I've been Adam McCullough. I'm out of here.